What was the lowest grade on your report card? Uh, I think it was like an A minus from middle school. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Khalil Green. My name is Gabby Ortega. My name is Amon. Hi, my name is Fatima al -Say. I'm Evan Blazy. My name is Jasseline. I'm a sophomore at Yale University. I am currently uh, majoring in poli sci, maybe concentrating in ERNM. I'm a major in history and economics as of right now. And I'm also the undergraduate student body president. I'm a first year in Berkeley College here at Yale. Um, and I'm potentially going to major in modern Middle Eastern studies and global affairs. I'm a first year at Yale studying ethnicity, race, and migration. I am a first year and I am a prospective political science and ethnicity, race, and migration double major. I am class of 2021 at Yale and I'm a computer science major. Are you a legacy student? I am not, no. Well, my sister went here, so I don't know if that makes me a legacy, but my parents didn't go here. No. No. No, I am not. I am not a legacy student. Did you go to private or public high school? I went to a public high school. It was magnet, specifically. Public. I went to a public magnet school. Public, but it was a magnet testing program. I went to a public high school. What was your high school class ranking? I actually don't know. At the end of my senior year, I just like didn't check my transcript. We didn't have ranks in Montgomery County, Maryland. I was third in my class. I was number two out of 700 kids, I believe. My school actually did away with class rank at the year that I was a junior, so I don't know my official class rank. High school GPA? I think 4.7-ish, around there. I also didn't check my trend. I think it was around like a, I wanna say it was like a 4.3? I don't know, I don't know. 4.0. I think about a 3.8, maybe 3.8. Ish. I think it was like a 4.6 something. Yeah. What was the lowest grade on your report card? B. A B that I got in math. A B. So I think the lowest grade I ever ended up with was like maybe a 91 or something. B minus. SAT or ACT score? SAT was a 1530. 1390. Um, my SAT score I believe was a 1530. ACT 34. I previously took the SAT, got a 1440, um, but the ACT did me right. <laughs> So I took the SAT back when it was still on the 2400 scale, and I got a 2320. How many times did you take the SAT? I took it three times. The first two times I took it, I got the same score, um, and I just really had to push for that last, that last try. I only took the SAT once. Twice. 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 How many practice sets did you take? 12, 13? Um, I've I can't count, probably like dozens. I like just printed out as many ones I could find online and then I just took each test once. I never really did a full practice test. I went online and I found a bunch of practice problems and I would drill those over and over again. And every time there was a problem where I really messed up, I would write it down and put it aside somewhere so I could come back to it later on. Not many, I didn't really study that well for the SAT. Which standardized test is easier? I think ACT was easier for me. SAT was just a little bit too much. I think the ACT is just a little easier. It's faster, it, the pace is much faster, um, but I just think that the ACT worked out much more for me because it's very straightforward. SAT. Definitely the SAT, which is why I went with it because the ACT is not my test. <laughs> what was your common app essay about? My common app essay was about my experiences in high school. So I went to a, a magnet school, it was a public school, but a magnet school for STEM. Um, and I was the only black person in that program. So I talked a lot about um, advocacy to get more black kids into STEM and, and higher education um, and talked about some of the challenges that I face and how I hope to hopefully change those barriers for the next generation to come. So I wrote about a story where my dad and I, it was kind of a project that we did together where we had to wire up a hot tub in the back of the house and it kind of involved a few stories of us almost setting the house on fire, me crawling through the dirt underneath the house, and then inevitably, we didn't get it done that day. It was just a big like mosh of like, oh, I love Sudan, and like how much I wanna reconnect with who I was and where my family comes from. I wrote about the importance of truth and how that's sort of been just a common theme in my life, how I grew up in a household where brutal honesty and telling the truth to people, regardless of whether or not I made them uncomfortable, was really important, and how that then translated into a lot of the work that I did in high school, and how that's just probably the value that's dearest to my heart. I think, I don't remember actually. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> How many drafts of the essay did you write? Goodness, like, probably like 12 or 13. It, it, was a, it was a long process. Six or seven, probably? I wrote, so I had the previous draft and then I like edited it probably like three, four times. Probably three. A lot. I had to go over it a lot of times before it came out pretty good. <laughs> How many hours do you think you spent working on your essay? 
I wasn't the best at keeping up with my essays, but I would say maybe like 10 hours. Five plus hours? Probably around 15 to 20. The actual writing probably only took around four-ish, but the editing was the most of the, the writing process. Like at first, I, I wouldn't work on it because I procrastinated a lot, but once it was like grind time, I think I worked on it like 10, 15 hours a week. I was always working on it. I'm totally spitballing by saying this. This is probably an arbitrary number, maybe like 40 hours total. How many people read your essay over? I think like four or five, it was like my sister, my high school counselor, teachers, like I just made everybody read over it. At maximum, I think I let like five or six people. Just my family members, so three. Two. I think I only had one person who was actually like editing it with me and like changing it throughout the process. Did you have a Yale interview? I did, yeah. I did have a Yale interview. Yes, I did have a Yale interview. Yes, I did. It was funny because I left the interview still feeling confident, but it definitely wasn't my best interview. It was the first interview I've ever had, so it was a little bit awkward, I think. I was doing a summer program here on campus in my junior summer, so I had a undergraduate student actually interview me on campus. The Yale summer program in astrophysics, or YSPA. I think it went well. We talked about my art a lot which was like surprising for you. How many AP courses did you take? Um, I took, wait, I think like nine. My school offered like 12, so I, there were some that I didn't take. Um, I can't remember. I want to say maybe nine. Uh, wait. I think I took about five or six, um, probably more. Six? I think I took 15. What were your scores on them? I didn't, I don't remember. I just know I got a five on only on the Spanish ones because I'm a native Spanish speaker. But other than that, I did not get a five on anything else. Seven of them were fives. Three of them were, uh, three of them, two of them were fours and three were, no, two were threes, yeah. I honestly did not do so well on APs. I don't think I got, I think I probably only got like one five and that was in Spanish. And it was because they like had lost my test, the audio portion. So they just like offered me the five. Most of them were good. There were some tests that I skipped, especially my senior year because Yale doesn't give credit for things. So there was no incentive to take them. Um, but most of them were five, fours and fives, maybe like a four here and there. And then I got a two on AP US history. So test scores do not matter. Did you play sport? I didn't, but I danced. I did not. I did swimming, yeah, and karate. Yeah, I was on the uh, wrestling team in high school. I played lacrosse all four years. I was on the varsity track and field team and the varsity co-ed volleyball team. What extracurriculars did you do? Uh, I was uh, part of the math team. I volunteered at like a local community center, like in my community. Lots, lots of ad advocacy work and some things that I created myself. Basic things like interact. I competed with my school DECA team, which is like a business competition themed club. I was on the local NSBE, which is Natural Society for Black Engineers. My school's debate team. Honor societies and everything. I worked with Best Buddies. Class vice president. Black Student Union. Newspaper for three years. I also volunteered on the weekends. I danced for like 13 years. Quiz Bowl. My school's equity team. Invent team, which was a robotics comp com competition team that we had in my high school. I did theater in high school. So like I mostly directed. Student government for a year. National Honor Society. Mock trial. And a few other small things I can't remember. How many schools did you apply to? Four. I applied to 10 schools. Just you. Around 10 or 11. I applied to maybe 15, 16 schools. It was a lot. Which were reach schools? Um, probably all the Ivy League ones that I applied to. Yale, Stanford, Harvard, Yale, and Duke. Princeton, Harvard. MIT, Harvard, and Stanford. Penn, Columbia, Dartmouth, um, and there might have been two or three others, and Georgetown. Which ones did you get into? I got into all of them except Harvard. None of them. <laughs> What's been the most surprising thing about going to university? I think how much you get homesick. Like, I remember I was like, you know what? I can't wait to leave. Like, I, I, would, I need to go. I need to leave home. Like, I need to step away from everything. I guess is that I actually get to sleep eight hours a night for the most part. So as much as like Yale, I think is on more of the progressive side of the Ivy Leagues, there's still a lot of opportunities for us to reform the campus and make it more inclusive for other communities. The time you spend with your friends. So when you're in high school, you have, at least for me, it was like 7 to 4 p.m. I was in school, and that's when I talked to my friends, and we maybe hang out on the weekends. Um, but from 5 p.m. onwards, you're like at your house with your parents and your family, you're not necessarily seeing them. Whereas in college, you can literally spend hours upon hours into the like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. just talking to your friends. How often do you call your parents? 
like once every two weeks. I try once every two weeks. Uh, once every couple days. I text my parents, so we have a group chat. I try to call them like two, three times, maybe a week. How difficult is CL one to ten? Ah, uh, solid seven. So, so far it's been like a five or six, um, but, but when the essays pile up, it's like a seven and eight. This year has been about an eight, but not just academics, it's been also obviously student government, extracurriculars, and um, just like managing social and personal stuff. For me, like definitely a nine or 10. Like a seven or an eight? When I was a first year, I would give it maybe a four, because there are so many different resources that they have to ease you into college life. Is Yale the best Ivy League? Hands down, I think Yale is definitely the best Ivy League. Yes. Yeah, but obviously I'm biased, but yes, 100%. Absolutely. Yes, it definitely is. <laughs> yes, um, it definitely is, without doubt. Can you tell me the stereotypes of the other seven? I don't really know much. I know, I know Yale is like the chill one I've heard. I don't know. Harvard, we just have beef with Harvard. We see that a lot of Harvard kids are just like, not really happy. Harvard? Oh, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. All I know is that Harvard sucks. <laughs> Harvard, we just don't like them. That's the only stereotype. <laughs> they came from Harvard Yale. They were like kind of like beefing with their own school. It was kind of problematic. I think Harvard is very like preppy, very like competitive. They're kind of always hustling, like always grinding. Like that's kind of tiring. Princeton is like terrible, I've heard. Like people are like unhappy there. Princeton kids are snobby and rich. I don't know a stereotype about Princeton. Probably just like, they're just kind of there. Columbia kids are insanely stressed. Like no social life other than like maybe the city. Columbia's just there. I don't know. I don't know anything about Columbia. It just seems like kind of depressing to me. Like, I hope that hurts no one's feelings, but it does. Penn kids, we see them as just really stressed. Penn seems lit. Penn? Mm. I've seen people on Instagram, but I don't know anything about Penn. I don't know. They kind of the snaky business school types. Kind of competitive like Harvard, I feel like. I know you guys want to start your startups, but like chill. <laughs> Dartmouth, you know, is the party school. Dartmouth? Dartmouth kids are just living in the woods. Cornell isn't like really sad, I heard. Cornell, no comment. Cornell is Cornell. Is there one school missing? Brown. Oh, Brown, um, definitely like a big like aesthetic Tumblr vibe, like just like hippie, um, just listening to Tame Apollo in the woods, I guess. Artsy, I feel like some someone the other day was like, you look like you go to Brown. I was like, okay. Super chill, you know. They're, they really go with the flow. Very hip, very chill too. What advice would you give your younger self? I think be challenge myself more and be more confident. I think I was usually scared to step out of my comfort zone and because of that, I didn't challenge myself enough. I'd probably say chill out. To know who you are. Don't stress out too much. Getting into college is one step in a long, a long life. So don't overemphasize how important it is and don't get too anxious about the results. Younger me really needed to like lower down on the APs and just like the testing in general. It's hard to say like don't stress as much because it works out in the end, but like I didn't know that at the time. So I can't really say that's what I would tell myself. It's like, oh yeah, chill. You'll get into Yale, it'll be fine. Don't stress, but it doesn't really work that way. Do you have any tips for high school students for getting in? There's so many. I'd say the biggest one is just plan and prepare. So create a timeline for yourself wherever you are in the process. If it's like one day away or if it's a year away. Everybody has different reasons for applying, but if like, I think they could really tell if you truly want to be a part of the Yale community and like want to take advantage of their resources and things like that. And I think they, you could definitely like tell through your application. So I think just being genuine about why you want to come here would really help you out. Just be yourself. That's, that's so cheesy though. Like I feel like if people told me that, I'd just be like, like, no, I need something more concrete. Making sure that you keep yourself busy. And that doesn't even mean doing like eight or nine activities because I think a lot of people think that you should do things like that to get into an Ivy League. Shape everything around your passion because that's gonna come through the most. Make the quality of what you're submitting uh, robust and, and exciting for all the admissions officers who have to read it. It's just about being yourself. I think what I love about Yale students is everyone is genuinely really nice and really passionate about what they care about. And I think that when you have your interview process and you're writing your Common App, just talk about who you are and what that means to you. It's good to be a well-rounded person, but there should be a spike somewhere along that circle. If you like this video today, please make sure to give it a ginormous thumbs up. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and press the bell to get notified when I post again. Have a good day, kids. Bye!